All right. Thank you, everybody, again for showing up to this webinar. We're very excited to share everything with you, give you more insight into the EMHA program, but more importantly, um, just share Tim's great insights and backgrounds uh, on the program. And you know, thank you very much, Tim, for showing up to this as well and, and willing your time. We know that you're a very busy person, so we greatly appreciate your availability and assistance with this. Just a couple reminders. You're in listen-only listen mode, so you won't be able to speak through the, the phone, um, but please do ask us questions, especially geared towards Tim and the EMHA program. We are happy to answer those. So you'll see a chat box in your window. Please feel free if anybody says anything that sparks a question, please feel free to ask your question through there and we will happily get to it. And then also uh, in about a day or so, a couple days, a copy of the presentation and a recording of the event will be available to you um, for you to view at your pleasure as well. Just to give you a little insight as to what we're going to talk about today, Tim Lewandowski is a student uh, with the EMHA program who began in the spring term, so he's still going through his semester. Um, and he has an amazing background, um, and it's always great to hear. We hear from alumni a lot, but it's always really great to hear from people who are in the thick of it, uh, currently going through the program, still learning how to you know, go through the time management piece and balance this with a pretty busy lifestyle already. So we are very excited to hear from Tim and his experience thus far. So he will go through the online experience, talk about networking and the residencies that we offer. Um, and we will also go through an admissions update. We'll talk a little bit about the program, requirements, things of that nature. And then at the end, we will absolutely do a Q&A. So again, just if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to uh, type those in the chat box and we'll absolutely get to those. So without further ado, and again, thank you so much, Tim, for offering your time. Uh, Tim, can you just please share a little bit about yourself and um, your experience thus far in the program? All right, thanks, Nate. Um, hi, everybody. Thanks for your time today. Um, happy to be here and tell you a little bit about my experiences so far. Um, just a little bit about my background. I am um, a clinical department manager um, in the field of prosthetics and orthotics. Um, my, I'm at a large rehabilitation hospital organization called Shirley Ryan Ability Lab in Chicago. Um, we're formerly the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago, or RIC. Um, my personal clinical background is in orthotics, so it's basically orthopedic and, and rehabilitation bracing. So everything from you know, unfortunately, kind of the Forrest Gump thing often comes to mind, the metal bracing attaching to the shoes, to a lot of the advanced carbon braces and neck bracing, um, kind of the wide variety of there. Um, and it goes hand in hand uh, with prosthetics. So upper and lower extremity prosthetics is what people are usually more familiar with. Um, and my clinical specialty, um, I worked a lot with advances in different technologies for ambulation and walking. Um, with a focus in pediatrics. Um, I've done a lot of lecturing, um, both in the U.S. and internationally on a lot of our standards of practice in the U.S. when I'm abroad, um, and then also some of the newer technologies that we're researching here at our facility. So uh, my clinical background is really more focused on some of the newer tech. Um, and I also have been a lecturer with Northwestern University um, in their prosthetics orthotics um, and the University of Illinois Chicago as well. Um, so I've been involved in academia a little bit, just kind of as a contributing lecturer um, a few times a year for a few different programs. Um, my undergraduate background is in communication sciences and disorders from Northwestern University, and then I studied my orthotics postgraduate education at Northwestern as well. Um, I've been in the healthcare field since 2007. Um, and in a management kind of departmental leadership position since 2014. Um, in my hospital organization, um, we just underwent a huge name change facility overhaul. Um, we moved into a brand new facility. Um, so we're now called Shirley Ryan Ability Lab. Um, we're a 240 bed inpatient um, center and then also we have a number of different out outpatient rehabilitation specialty programs. Um, we have affiliations and some freestanding locations throughout the Midwest, 
Um, and our main focus is really an in integration of research and clinical care, um, which we call innovation centers. Um, and we're in the re rehabilitation medicine, so usually after traumatic injuries, we'll have patients that uh, come along to us um, for their physical rehabilitation. So why did I pursue an EMHA and why the USC uh, EMHA? Well, first of all, you know, at having been in a management position for four, almost five years, um, I, I recognized that, that, you know, as I advanced my career, pursuing an advanced degree in leadership would allow me to, you know, widen my career path and, and learn more about the opportunities that are out there. So I've been been doing some research on them in, over the past year, year and a half, um, you know, and went to a number of these di different webinars like this and um, kind of settled on the USC program um, for a number of reasons. Um, an online program overall was something I absolutely was looking for. Um, I think there's a lot of value, um, especially in healthcare leadership, to um, advance in your career and experience your day-to-day -day, day -day professional life while you're completing the degree. So an online program was pretty complementary to what my goals were. Um, the USC program in particular, the first thing that stands out for me, I would say, um, is really the focus on the cohort diversity. So um, you obviously are going to be going through this online program with a group. So the, they really, really focus and drive home that the cohorts are really pretty, pretty much hand-picked to get a wide array of disciplines from, with healthcare backgrounds. So, and I think as you progress more and more through healthcare leadership, obviously we all know, um, regardless of the point in your career, you're going to be in a room with people with many different clinical backgrounds and many different business backgrounds as well. Um, my organization in particular, um, given that we've just gone undergone this big change to really merge many different disciplines together to kind of innovate and advance rehabilitation medicine, this directly relates, relates to what I'm doing every day. So um, having an educational program that kind of mirrors what my organization is seeking to do really worked out well for me. Um, and then the executive program. So there are a number of different executive programs out there. Um, it was really important to me that these cohort members would be professional peers and colleagues um, with me, and it kind of ties back into the um, cohort diversity too. So USC, by being an executive program, you are required to have healthcare background, and then from a wide, wide variety of backgrounds. I definitely, at this point in my career and what I'm looking for to advance um, my career, I did not want to be in classes with fresh graduates right out of undergraduate with very limited to no experience in the real world, and especially in the real world of healthcare. Um, and then as I learned more about it, and I'll talk, I'll talk more about kind of my, my experiences thus far, but the scheduling design of the program, when you really get down to it, it's very clear that it was designed for working professionals. It was designed, I could, I'm assuming that really over the, as the program has evolved, they've taken a lot of feedback and put a lot of thought into how they even just designed the weekly format. So talk a little bit about the Trojan week, which basically instead of our week ending or in, um, ending in beginning with Sunday, um, we go more through a Wednesday to Tuesday. So if you think about assignments you have due, Sunday night was, is always, you know, Looking back over my educational career, um, Sunday nights were always the very stressful time and you got to get everything in. Um, for working professionals, usually most things are due more on a Tuesday. So you can have a little bit of time flexibility there. Um, so I think it was really very thoughtfully um, arranged and I think it's been a big benefit having gone through the program as far as I have so far. So. As I said, that cohort diversity is really at the forefront of, I think, USC's advantage in their program. Um, my cohort that I have, um, most of my classes are two-section, but really, if you think it's a small group, 20 to 25 people, this group includes a wide variety of healthcare professionals, um, including a number of them 
that I never expected. And if I go back to my clinical background in orthotics, if I just say that and I don't tie the prosthetics in, I'm used to being the person with one of the weirder jobs in the room. Um, even when I go to hospital conferences, nobody, a lot of people don't know exactly what I do until I explain it. Um, I was very pleasantly surprised to see this wide range. So our obvious physicians, nurses, and therapists, um, hospital executives <clears throat> um, were what I expected to be peers with. I have a number of those in the cohort, but also health plan administrators. We're talking so much in our classes about, you know, our political climate and healthcare climate and who's going to pay for things. There are people in 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 my classes that work for work for some actually run some different health plans across the country um, that can provide a whole another insight and a whole another and a side of the coin view. Um, IT professionals, and that's also both on the payer and the provider side. So we talk more and more about electronic medical records. There are people that own companies that develop them, and there are people that utilize them for payment. Um, nursing home executives. Um, there's a couple who have executive experience um, in other industries as well in business. Um, there's even somebody who is new to healthcare and is more of a health technology startup funder and um, consultant. So there's a that there's a completely different view as well. So very very wide range of people, um, and because of that, I think the class discussions and even the discussion boards, um, which I'll talk a little bit about, um, are naturally pretty engaging. Um, even though you're obviously you were in a class, so we need to focus on subjects. So um, most of our discussions in classes are really starting on a basic review and pinpoint some subjects from reading material or class material, and then they start to kind of take on a life of their own with people sharing their different experiences and opinions. So a lot of the times, you know, our classes, because we're all working professionals, they do a good job of keeping the classes short, and if it's a 60-minute class, it ends after 60 minutes. Um, a lot of the times the conversations are going very, very well, um, and people will kind of comment in the chat boards after it ends that they're still sending some thoughts or wish there was another, you know, 30 minutes of time devoted to continue talking about that. So definitely, you know, if you think about your educational experience, especially undergrad, you know, and before that, there weren't a whole lot of people that wanted class to go late. So it's, you, you can tell everybody is here because they care about what they're learning, and it really, um, it really shows when people are engaged. So my experience thus far. So online format. Um, I have, I do have experience with the online format, both um, in some of my previous graduate work and also um, as a contributing lecturer. I have lectured and been taped to play in some online programs, and I have um, done a number of different web-based educational platforms. So I am at an advantage uh, that I do have experience with that. Um, so I think my acclimation to it did go smoothly. Um, but I think there are many in my class who do not have experience with it, and, and it's gone smoothly as well. Um, but as I said, it's usually one-hour web conferences for my classes. Um, so I'm in two classes right now, for example. One of them, we have class every week. The other, we have biweekly class and a few um, additional guest speakers and things. Um, the online format, you can really plan ahead. You get a week overview. And you can see the week overviews from week 1 to 15 on your first day of the class. So you can really plan ahead. Um, the intimate class size, and it's interaction driven. As I said, there's maybe 20, 25 people in my cohort. So divide that in half for two sections of a class. It's usually 10 to 12 people on the webinars. Um, and it really helps us interact and have good discussions. Um, I think the applications and programs are really straightforward. When you first start, there's there's a plenty of resources to go through and uh, do dry runs of all the different applications, but it really pretty much just you have one to two USC portals you log into and everything is there. Um, the bulk of your time, as I said, you know, one or two days a week you're going to have class. So the bulk of what you learn and the bulk of your time is spent on individual work. Um, so there's going to be a wide variety of reading assignments. Um, most of them either all tie in or they are written currently or based on current events. Um, so 
you know, textbook factual driven information and then also a whole lot of management, um, business review, business school type of, of different leadership and management style articles. Um, there's usually, in, a, in each class, there's usually at least an assignment every week. Um, my health finance class, for instance, um, we do have midterms, quizzes, and tests, um, you know, every few weeks. Um, basically, the quizzes and tests are very straightforward. You, you'll be told how much time is allotted. Um, you can schedule that into your week and when it has to be completed by, and you can just sit down and, and go for it and, and take the test through the online portal. Very, very straightforward. Um, and then discussion posts and responses. Um, you know, by the nature of being an online program, some of that natural discussion that would happen among classmates doesn't happen. So when you first start out, it, it's definitely clear that they, you have to do discussion posts. They're required. Um, you kind of dread it at first because it's just you're just kind of forced conversation posting. But even in week three to four, I would say, it starts to become people have a feel for who everybody is and people are posing questions to other people based on their experience um, versus just posting on some subject you're supposed to. So they actually are very, very valuable um, having done it for several weeks. Um, and then group work. Um, one or more of the classes will have group assignments, but it is definitely, it's not busy work. Um, I think they're the assignments that are assigned to a group, there's a reason for it. Um, I think the um, you, collaboration on the questions and things that you have to answer as a group does really enhance your understanding um, versus just making something else, you know, that you just have to do. And there's a lot of mediums available for group work. So we're used to doing the web conferencing. There's different digital classrooms that are available for us to meet. Most of the time we're doing text messages, maybe a conference call, um, but using Google Hangouts or Google Drive, Google Documents, just to share ideas back and forth. So there's not a whole lot of time you really have to schedule with your group. Um, so my week in the life thus far as a student. So as I mentioned, the Trojan week really works out well for me. Um, Wednesday is day one and Tuesday is day seven. So if you look at your assignments for the week, if I, if I sit down on Wednesday, everything that I need to have done is usually due the following, the upcoming Sunday or Tuesday for most assignments. So it's really easy to plan ahead. Um, you can forecast your workload, your planning life. Life's going to happen around you. You're going to be busy. Um, you know, you're 40 to 50, hopefully not 60, but at times it is hour a week, work week, and then on top of your school. So being able to plan ahead is huge. Um, assignments are clearly stated. Um, and as I said, from day one of a class, you can really be aware. If you look through, you can see pretty much the week overview for all of the 15 weeks. So. You can, you can figure out when things are going to be due and organize it however you want, put it in your own calendar so that you're ready. Um, time breakdown, so reading and review, as I said, most of it's all independent, as you would expect from an executive graduate level program. Um, I usually try to spend one to two hours, a couple days during my work week on doing reading, um, it reviews if there's a test coming up, but kind of try to take care of the bulk of my reading assignments in little spurts. Um, weekly assignments too, this is going to vary. Sometimes you don't have any assignments due and you just get lucky it works out. There's no assignments from either class, so you can knock your time down a little bit that week. But when you do, if you had an assignment for both, it's usually maybe writing a couple page essay or paper, um, doing a group project or taking an exam. Um, so maybe two to four hours per week. Um, all in all, um, I would say so far, it's probably averaging 20, 25 hours per week on average. Um, and as I said, sometimes it's a little bit less, and sometimes you'll find a little more. Um, but you can count pretty much on that. Um, school, school work, life balance, there's been many weeks since I've started where I'm putting in 60 hours plus at my job. So adding that 20 to 30 on for classes is tough, but you can plan ahead. So, you know, reading assignments vary in length. So usually you'll have multiple reading assignments every single week. So you can kind of plan. You print out the shorter ones, and you can just read them throughout your workday. Um, 
you know, or during your commute or, you know, however it works for you. And then you'll be aware when you've got a lot, like multiple chapters to read, set aside your chunks at home, and you can spend that, you know, a couple hours at a time chunks. Mine is, for me, it's early in the morning. I wake up extra early and try to get all this stuff done early in the day, um, sometimes before work, but definitely on the weekends. Um, discussion boards, you have to do them. You got to post, usually post replies over a few days between Sundays and Tuesdays every week. Um, but this can totally be done on the go. Usually I just, um, will just log in from work a couple times a day, um, maybe write a quick post or read, read my classmates' responses. And I've done it plenty of times on my iPhone, just on the go, just been able to post a quick, quick reply to things. Um, exams and assignments, like I said, you can look at the week overview and know what's coming up. So I know the dates well ahead of time. I just put them in my calendar so I know, all right, I got to get this done. Um, and then the assignments all take one to two hours a week. The exams, same thing. It's usually one hour or two hours and you just have to sit for that continuous period. I have never taken the full time thus far for um, an exam. It seems like there's ample, ample amount of time. Um, and then that Trojan Week setup, you take advantage of it to, to kind of balance schoolwork and life. So I know all my assignments are due on Tuesdays. It just works out for me that I just know Mondays and Tuesdays are going to be really, really long days, and I'm going to make sure I have everything done. Um, you know, we all have busy lives, so you've got that weekend that's just packed up. Um, you know, just last weekend I had a wedding to go to, and I was traveling, and I just knew... Wednesday, Thursday, I'm going to get as much as I can done, and then there's going to be a couple of days Monday and Tuesday. But I did not do schoolwork Saturday and Sunday because I was on the road. So that's fine. You can usually plan ahead and take advantage of that setup. Um, and then just lastly, what's my interaction been like with classmates and faculty? So the, the web conference sessions, they actually closely mim mimic a pretty standard class um, classroom experience that I've had in my other graduate school work. Um, there's a lot of people, if you're logged in early, people are getting to know each other um, using the chat function or, you know, you start, there's small talk at, at dead times in the class or if we're waiting for technology to load. So the as far as the relationships, I think over the course of two years, you're going to make plenty of good, solid relationships and contacts with, with your classmates. Um, as I said, the group works. There's lots of different mediums you can use, um, and you just kind of work out with the group what works best. What's pretty much been best for us is texting during the periods when things need to be reviewed quickly, but we're really pretty much using Google Docs, and multiple users will edit it. Um, everybody's busy, so we usually just look the week ahead, and we'll coordinate a couple meeting times to do a quick phone conference if we need to. Um, and like I said, it's definitely not busy work. I think it really does enhance it to work with a group on, on some of these things. Um, and then also just keeping in mind, faculty are our colleagues in the health profession. So um, they are working with people every day, managing people every day to some extent most of the time. Um, so the contributing lecturers can give a lot of really good, you know, real life anecdotes or compliment to the material. Um, and so far, they've really been very accessible. So email, text, if something's urgent. I have not had to text anything urgent so far, um, but they're you know willing to give out cell phones and, and definitely quick to email back and forth. So the interaction has definitely been positive. There's no um, no issues at all really with getting a hold of people. I'll turn it back over to Nate now to talk a little bit more about the program. Tim, thank you so much. I mean, that that's why these webinars are just so important uh, for for us also as advisors and for the audience and potential uh, and future Trojans is just the stuff that gets covered here isn't the stuff that you're going to read on a website or, you know, find online somewhere. It's the real information that is just so valuable. So, Tim, I, I can't thank you enough for, for everything that you shared with us. Uh, I've been doing this program for quite a while, and I, I still learn stuff. So I, I really appreciate everything that you shared with us. Um, and I, Good, I, absolutely, I my pleasure. Um, so to go into a little bit more on the, the enrollment uh, portion of this, this webinar, I uh, just wanted to go over a couple of the, the requirements. They're pretty, uh, I don't want to say basic, but they're pretty streamlined from, from most programs I'm sure you've seen. 
So we do obviously require a bachelor's degree from a regionally accredited institution. We prefer a 3.0 and a GPA, but really that's flexible. Um, it really, we, we certainly care about your work experience in this program. Um, and so, you know, if you're looking at demographics for average age, we're probably a little bit older than a normal program, probably in the, the low mid thirties. Um, so the GPA, you know, it might be 10, 15 years old. Um, and we, we certainly care more about professionals and then what they're doing currently. So um, take that for what that is. Uh, transcripts, we do require transcripts from all institutions that you have attended. So, you know, if you transferred any credits into other institutions, we will need all those tra uh, transcripts. And we also require three letters of recommendation. Professional letters are absolutely acceptable, and that's what 99% of our letters are. Um, you do not need an academic letter of recommendation, um, again, because most of our uh, students are pretty tenured people in the industry, an academic letter is not necessary. Um, but not that it's unnecessary, but professional letters are definitely uh, what we'll look, we'll look for. Um, a statement of purpose is one of the requirements. It's 500 to 1,000 words, and really it just addresses, you know, why, what have you been doing in your career so far? Why do you want this program, and how is it applicable to your current path and future path? And also, why is USC the school that you chose to attend? So just three, four basic questions in there. It's not long. Um, it's not meant to be really uh, a very long essay, just to the point, avoid the superfluous information and you'll be all set with that. And all of the stuff we're talking about with these requirements, you know, your advisor will absolutely help you through these pieces should you choose to, to move forward. And if you already are listening and you're in the process, then you know um, how that works and they, they help you through the process. So um, the statement of purpose, and then we look for a resume. And again, really, uh, CVs are acceptable, although the committee that reviews the applications does tend to prefer a more traditional resume with the bullet points and the structure of um, time. So this is where I'm currently at. Prior to that, I was here. So um, one thing to keep in mind, because a lot of us do have CVs, um, so a resume in the more traditional sense is something that they would look for. And then the experience requirements. So we do look for at least five years in the healthcare industry, preferably three plus of those years um, would be in a more uh, leadership position. Maybe executive is the right word for that, obviously, but um, five years minimum, and then, you know, obviously managerial leadership focus as well. Um, and kind of just to, to speak more on the experience portion, we do have something called pre-qualification for the program, um, and it's just literally a uh, handful of questions that we'll ask you, and we'll also ask for your resume or CV. Um, in this case, we could use the CV for the pre-qualification for the application they would want the resume. Um, but it's just a couple questions that asks you about your, your experience, how many people you manage, uh, if you have any budgeting experience or familiarity with that. Um, so it just goes through the, the basic steps um, in that just to make sure it is a good fit um, and that we definitely don't waste anybody's time with that. Um, just to also give you a quick reminder, we have our next term is coming up in the, uh, this, this summer. Um, that begins May 9th. The deadline for those applications is about a month from now, around April 20th, so still plenty of time to apply. The process, if you have letters of recommendation uh, or recommenders in mind, the process really can take maybe two to three weeks max. It's definitely not that difficult, and we will be there to assist you along the way. And then after the summer term is the fall term, and that will be uh, September 6th, and that will be deadline probably early August. So obviously plenty of time for that as well. Um, and so... Without further ado, we do have some questions that came in, so I definitely want to be able to address some of those with, uh, with still being respectful of everybody's time. Um, 
some people were asking how long is the program and if you could go at a part-time basis, and Tim definitely touched upon this too. Um, the program is two years in length, so that would be six semesters, and you would go, let's just say with a summer term, you would go summer, fall, spring, summer, fall, spring, so six semesters and you'd be done, which is two years. That would be a total of six units per semester. We call them units, credit units, they're really the same thing. Um, but six units is comprised typically of one four-unit class and one two-unit class. Um, so really it's kind of at a part-time pace with that because we do want to be cognizant of everything that you have going on. Um, and so that would take you two years to complete. If you just took four units a semester, which would either be one four-unit class or two two-unit classes, uh, that would take you three years to complete if you went the whole way through. And many people do a little bit of both just depending on work, life demands. Um, so many people do a little bit of both, so they'll fall right between that two and three year mark. Um, one of the other questions were about the GRE, um, and that's a great question because I did not mention that in the requirements piece, and that's because we don't require the GRE. Uh, think of the pre-qualification piece as really the replacement of the GRE. Again, we care more about your experience um, and what you're going to do and what you're currently doing, So, um, and just making sure the degree is applicable to you and your role uh, in future roles. So, no, the GRE is not required. And then looks like we have three more questions. Uh, one of them is about the residency piece. Um, and so we do have two residencies that are on the Los Angeles campus. Again, just as a reminder, Tim did bring that up. Um, and so the first one's typically in the, the beginning middle of your second or third semester. So not to get too technical, but if you begin in the spring term, which is January, um, that's the only term that has the residency in the beginning of their third semester. Summer and fall students um, have it in the beginning of their second semester. So typically the first one runs um, Friday through Monday and you'll get to meet your classmates, you'll meet your cohort, sorry, same thing, um, you'll meet your professors, you will see the campus, you'll go through lectures and workshops, uh, guest speakers will be available, you'll go to different healthcare sites in the area, meet with their leadership and see what's going on. Um, and there's projects you work on together, you'll present that project as you're, like you were presenting it to a board of governors, so there's a lot going on uh, with that. It's a packed couple days, but it is so engaging, um, and it really, it's, 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 I don't want to say it brings the program to life, but it's really great to put faces to names, especially with people, like Tim was mentioning, that you work so closely with. Um, it's nice to meet them in person and, and really build that bond. Um, and get that Trojan family essence. So that's the, the first residency. And then the second residency is towards the end of the program. This one's again about four or five days and it's gonna close out the program. You'll work on a couple projects, um, but ultimately also it is for commencement and graduation. So you get to walk um, and this one typically takes place during May. So you might walk a semester early sometimes. Um, but those are the two residency components. They're fantastic. A lot of people get so much out of them and they're very glad that they have them. Um, and again, we get that time is a constraint for everybody and that's why we try to give you at least six, seven months heads up um, for when those residencies are so that you can plan properly for that. Um, someone asked a, a great question um, in regards to the degree. Does it say online? Um, and no, it doesn't. Uh, our program is if we don't offer it on campus because no one could really attend it <laughs> with their work schedule. So uh, no, it does not say online. It says Master of Health Administration from the University of Southern California, just like any degree would be from USC. So it's USC all the way, everything's the same. You get the benefits that everybody else does. Um, you can go to campus, you go to the library, use the gym, what have you, do events. We definitely encourage people to go to events. So yeah, it's no different. Um, you just meet a couple times a month online instead of a couple times a month in person. Um, and do I get to go to graduation? We did answer that. So yes, you do get to go to graduation and commencement. Um, and then the live sessions, just a clarification on that. Um, 
Tim was right on. You have them once or twice a week, depending on the pace that you go at. Again, so if you take two classes a semester, you'll most likely have, uh, it might alternate. So one week you might have two live sessions. The next week you would have one because the two unit course would only meet every other week because it's half the work, it's half the units. Uh, whereas the four unit course might meet every other week or close to. Um, they are typically in the evenings between 5 and 6 p.m. Pacific time is when they start and they're about an hour like Tim mentioned. Um, and if you went part time, you would probably have a live session once a week um, around that time. And they are recorded. Uh, so if you do miss it and for whatever reason work gets swamped and you're too busy, you know, definitely will be recorded, um, but they you do get the most out of the program by attending those live sessions and interacting with your classmates, um, being able to converse and talk with your professors. So um, they're they're really great. It's, it's nice to see where our technology is at now. It's, it's almost like it's more familiar than face-to-face -face sometimes. So um, it looks like we, I'm trying to see if we have any other questions pop up. Um, one person asked, is it possibly a full-time student? We do consider the six units full-time. Um, that would get you done in two years. Uh, your question might be, can you get it done quicker than two years? Um, and if that is the question, typically we, we don't suggest it if you're working, um, which everybody for the most part is in the program. Um, because if you add another two unit course, um, typically that would only add about four or five hours. But since you're balancing that with two other courses and various textbooks and articles, it adds close to 10. I mean, you're looking at 40 to 45 hours with taking another course to get you done maybe a little quicker. Uh, plus, it also depends on when different courses are offered because not every each course isn't offered every semester. So um, that's also plays a role in that. So six units we do consider part uh, full time, and that would take you about uh, two years to complete. Um, and Tim, uh, this one question came in, and I think it's great. And not to put you on the spot, but if you could um, kind of, in your opinion, you know, what would you say your your favorite experience so far of being in the program in a Trojan? You know, what would you say one of your favorite experiences is? Um, I think the big thing, it, it actually is the live sessions, um, which surprises me because I'm not a huge class person. Um, I like to kind of learn independently. Um, I think the best experience is having these discussions um, that are related to current events, but also kind of founded in, in fact and looking at, you know, the economics of healthcare. because I think it, it, it has changed the way I think, I think, immediately. So... Um, when I hear all these different um, perspectives, particularly for me, um, I manage clinical services, so I am definitely on the provider side um, and, you know, have see all these different changes with our healthcare payer system. Um, and I'm hearing all these different insights from people on the payer side in my classes, um, and I have much more of an understanding of what they are going through as well um, so I'm definitely approaching problems much differently. So I think that, you know, the thing to, to kind of put it simply, I think it's changing the way I approach day to day. So it's definitely carrying over very, very quickly to the next day, you know, at work. Awesome. And so it's like that, what's that phrase, like learn today, do tomorrow type stuff? It, 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 it very much is. It definitely, what you learn may have an impact on a meeting that you have the following day. So it's, it's it's pretty neat to to actually learn something from an article you read that you may even verbatim repeat in the meeting the next day, which is pretty interesting. Ah, that's awesome. Uh, that's so cool. And one more person had a quick question, uh, just asking to repeat residency semesters. Uh, so again, if you begin in the summer term, your first residency will be in the probably beginning of your second semester, so that would be like September, October. That's when um, Tim's residency, first residency will be, probably in that late September, early October range. Um, so you can actually, no, I don't think you would see Tim there, because um, it's a different cohort. But, and then if you began in the fall term, 
your first residency would be probably mid-February, early March. Um, so those are usually when our residencies are. Um, and this one came in, and Tim, this is a, a question I would ask you just from your experience. Yeah. Um, as far as the, the attendance goes, question. Yeah. Yeah, so the question, yeah, does attendance count against you, for instance? Um, you said they're recorded, so if you miss a lecture, can you follow up later on, but it won't count against you? Um, from what I'm seeing in the classes, it is definitely instructor practice, um, instructor preference on how they want you to deal with that. Um, but pretty much, it's, it's very much, you definitely get the most out of it if you attend. Um, but they're definitely understanding. I think it's, it's more one of those things is keep the instructor posted on what's going on. So, you know, there's plenty of times people are, you know, I was planning on getting out of here. I'm stuck in this meeting. I'm not going to be able to make it. So pretty much what I found is if you watch the recorded session and then, you know, maybe write up something that you found of interest or co contribute what you would have contributed to that conversation and send that to the lecturer, um, to the instructor, um, you know, they might kind of count that as a positive towards your participation grade. So you, you're really, you want to be there most of the time as much as you can and then engaged when you are in class. I think that's far more important is that when you are in the class that you're engaged and contributing. I think that goes a longer way. Um, and then also keep in mind that these are web conferences so you can call in. So lots of people call in from the car or people kind of log in and at least just be there listening and maybe use the chat function. Um, I, have, I have attended a class from the airport and it worked fine. So there's lots of different ways you can also kind of get that credit for being there. Awesome. And uh, again, if anybody has any other questions, please send them through. Uh, one of the last questions was about project management or data management. Um, and Tim, you can feel free to jump in on this too, but they do involve that, like how to lead others, um, especially looking at like leading physicians and other groups, that's a huge thing that they look at throughout the program. Um, data management, you will look at, um, uh, there's at least two or three courses that do involve information systems and technology, uh, and especially in particular to the patient experience and patient engagement. So um, I don't wanna say that those are the entire focus of the program, but those aspects are certainly littered throughout the program. And again, just to reiterate, live sessions, they're about, uh, Tim, would you say they're between 5 and 6 p.m. Pacific time? Yeah, it, so, bo so both of mine are um, 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. Um, I'm in Chicago, um, so I'm a little bit later, so 7.30, so that works out well for me. Um, it seems like, you know, in my group, most of the people are on the West Coast, so they might be scrambling a little bit. Oh, I think a lot of people are doing them from, from work. Um, but yeah, usually mine are 5.30. Perfect. And again, if anybody has any last minute questions, please send them through, but it looks like there may not be any more questions. And again, Tim, I just can't thank you enough for, for taking time out of a already busy <laughs> work day and it's Tuesday or it's Thursday, so it's day two. So I'm sure you're getting started on some of those posts and things. So I, I just really appreciate all your insight, it's invaluable, and we are gonna just, we've learned so much, and I thought this was just fantastic. So again, thank you so much for, for your time and for all that great information. Uh, we, we really, really appreciate that. My pleasure. Fight on, everybody.